Well, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. If it had not been for the Lord, Sister Gloria, that was on my side, I would have been lost, 
I would have been without my right mind, Sister Toya. But it's something about God's grace and God's mercy that he shows up just in the nick of time. And today, I don't know about those that's watching via Facebook land or those sitting here today, but it seems like a good day just to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, because you woke me up this morning. Thank you, Lord, because you gave me the activities of my limbs. Thank you, Lord, because in spite of how I was feeling on the inside, you still put a praise on the outside. And that's the reason just to say thank you this morning. As you look out and see all these young people this morning, that's the reason to say thank you. They could have been anywhere. Kamaya came in and she was singing. She had a song of praise on her tongue. So even she knows that if she don't praise him, that the rocks will cry out and praise him in her place. So we're just glad that you are here today. We're so grateful for those who were able to participate and just celebrate the life of our own Dr. Janice Violet White McCoy. Um, truly, truly, she will be missed. But the most important thing is that as the days uh, ahead come to continue to pray for Roderick and Quentin and William. You know, you will be surrounded by so many people the week of and all up until you lay them to rest. But as the days coming along, you know, the phone calls get a little less, the people check in just a little bit less, and those are, those are the times that you need people a little bit more. Just to do a little temperature check and say, how are you? Um, and if you're still sitting out here and you have a mother and you have a father, you better love them while you can. Because when they close their eyes, you don't get to say, I could have, I should have, I wish I had. Today marks one year that my sweet mommy has been gone. And I am just, as I'm just a ball of emotions, I know that yet she is proud because she set out to do a good work. And even though some days I don't know how I'm gonna make it, I learned to look up to the hills from which cometh my help because all of my help comes from the Lord. On yesterday, someone said, I, I just don't know, you're just so strong and it's just a smile. I said, you know what, the smile is all I have. <laughs> Somebody gonna get that. The smile is all that I have because when you don't have anything else, and you know that God is still in the working business. You can smile because you know he hasn't forgotten about you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read you a little scripture. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to move out of the way. But this scripture just kind of stuck with me this morning. And it said, and this is from 1 Thessalonians, starting... Look, you know, you need glasses now. At the fourth chapter and the 11th verse, it says, make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands just as we instructed you before. Then people who are not believers will respect your way, will respect the way you live, and you will not need to depend on others. In other words, whatever you do, do it faithfully and do it positively. You don't have to tell everybody how you're moving because God is moving for you. So make it your goal. You don't, don't celebrate till the battle is over. Don't tell them about your journey because everybody's not praying for you and everybody is not believing like you're believing. God gave you a vision, walk in your vision, move quietly. And then at the end, you just announce, say, look what God is doing in my life because I was faithful over a few things. God will make me ruler over many things. So may God bless you and keep you this morning. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for today. We're so grateful for the things that you've done and all the things that you are yet to do in our lives. God, we thank you for this St. Mark Baptist Church family. 
God, we thank you for the ones who are here and those who had a desire to be here but weren't able to be here today. God, we ask that you bless each and every person under the sound of my voice. God, you know the things that they stand in the need of. Some of them this morning came with bowed down heads, with heavy hearts. Some of them came wondering how they're going to make it through the week. Finances aren't where they need them to be. Health is a little shaky. Doctor reports aren't what they expected. But God, you told us that if we asked and we believed anything in your, your name, that not only would you supply us with our needs, but you would turn every situation around. So God, today we stand believing that by your stripes today that we're already healed. God, we came believing that deliverance, oh God, shall take place in this place today. God, we thank you today for the moderator and the shepherd of this house. God, we ask that you continue to lift him up and strengthen him, oh God, even in his body, oh God. God, we speak to every element, every pain, oh God, everything that is trying to keep him bound. And God, we loose right now, oh God, healing in a miraculous way from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. God, we decree and we declare healing over his body. God, he's been on this journey a long time. And the song says, and I'm just not tired of praising you yet. He's seen a lot of things. He's had to put to rest a lot of his members, a lot of friends along the way. And that's a heavy burden to carry. People that you've laughed with, that you've smiled with, that you've shared personal things with. They're no longer there to pick up the, pick up the phone and say, Crosley, you can run just a little while longer. But because he knows you, and he knows that you are a father to the fatherless. <laughs> he knows that you are a friend to the friendless. <laughs> he even knows that you are a mother to the motherless. Yeah. He knows all about it. He knows how to put his faith and all of his hope in you. God, we give you praise for him today. God, we glorify your name in this place. God, we say touch right now in a miraculous way. Stop by St. Mark today and do what only you can do. God, we say thank you right now. Thank you for the hills. Thank you for the valleys. <laughs> thank you for everything that you are doing yet in our life. God, we ask a, sp a special prayer this morning over the McCoy family. <laughs> Have your way today. Have your way in everything that they do. As the days get rough, oh God, remind them to trust in you, oh God, to lean and depend on you. As their hearts get heavy, oh God, pick up their heads, oh God, and remind them that you are a very present help in the time of storm. As their minds begin to wander and they will want to be off and all alone by themselves, Remind of him them that those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, <laughs> they shall abide with you forevermore. So God, we say have your way today. Bless Sister Daisy, Sister Katie, oh God. Bless Sister Ashley, oh God, Brother Jones, oh God. Bless all our elder members, oh God, that's unable to be here. God, we just say have your way today. God, we say have your way today. God, we stop by to say hallelujah today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We give you the highest praise. And when we can't say anything else, oh God, if all we can do is wave our hands, it's more than enough to let you know that we appreciate you. We love you, Lord. We can't make it without you. We can't do this thing called life without you, oh God. So God, we say have your way today in the name of Jesus. And somebody who believe God say it's already done. I don't have to wait until the battle is over. I can go ahead and shout now, Cassius. <laughs> I can go ahead and say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. 
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, in all that is within me, bless his hope. up this morning and started us on our way. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his whole holy name. Come on, stretch your hands to heaven this morning and let's sing that one more time. Oh, he has done great things. He has done great things. Yes, he has. He has done great things. When my voice lifted high, he has done Great things bless his home. Lee bless his home. Lee bless his home. Lee. His holy name. Come on and clap those hands for the Lord this morning. Come on, come on, come on, clap his name. Come on, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, anybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. For he's worthy to be praised. I know you feel a little heaviness on you, but I tell you, if you praise the Lord, he will break every feather. He will break every chain. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. No matter how you feel, speak a word and you will be healed. 
Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Come on, point to yourself this morning and sing. Oh, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to speak victory doing the test no matter how you feel speak a word and you will be healed speak over yourself encourage yourself in the Lord Psalms 103 says bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name then it says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not the benefits. It was David that was having a hard time after zigzag. So let me tell you something. There's nothing wrong with talking to yourself as long as you're telling yourself the right stuff. And what David had to do that day, he had to speak to himself. And he had to encourage himself in the Lord. So it doesn't really matter how we feel. God has been good. How about this? God has, yes, he has smiled on me. Yeah. He has set me free. Oh, oh, God has mm, smiled on me. He's been good. To me, come on, help me sing it. Oh, 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 oh. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. It says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amaze, yeah, how sweet, let me hear you. That say the red like me. Here's the part. I once was lost, yeah, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Point to somebody and say, oh, God has smiled on me he has set me free oh God has smiled on me he's been he's been good he's been mighty mighty good he's been all of that I go through He's been good, mighty, mighty good. He's been good to me. Praise the Lord, everybody. He's been better than good. ask that we'll stand and do our vision statement together. To be effective bridge builders through teaching biblical principles and intercessory prayer, which will lead mankind to follow after God, thus to live a holy life, life to its fullest. To equip the saints, less fortunate, hurting, the loss and least likely to succeed. We will seek to be, as well as to teach others to be, Christ-centered and to settle for nothing less than God's best, abundant life in Him. Amen, amen. God bless, God bless. I don't want to uh, work, overwork uh, Pastor Jones, but uh, if he would just uh, lead us and uh, pray for us, and we really do want to Remember our sick, 
uh, all of those, Mama Katie and Brother Jones, and, and there are others who are going through. And uh, we just want to just pray, just believe God uh, today and uh, ask God to move miraculously. I'm, uh, I'm trying not to run no race this morning, but God is good. Yes, he is. And uh, uh, pray for us. Uh, my daughter, Donna, she's been going through some, I, I don't know if hers is bulging this or sciatic or whatever it is, but she and I both been going to the uh, therapy. And I got one in the morning, so and I don't know if they be helping or hurting, because I'd be hurting more when I leave there. But uh, I, I believe it is helping. It is helping. Amen. So just pray. Let's pray for the entire church family. And Brother Doug, you don't have to leave. You can do it right where you are. Just, yes, just pray for us. And we do this right quick, church. Let us stretch our hands to our pastor. Yeah. Hallelujah. Man. Glory. Glory. He's in pain. These bodies are finite. They be breaking down on us. But we, pray, we serve a God that specializes in everything. Sing a verse of the song with me. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God. Body, stand with me. Agree with me, we're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Yes, yes, yes. You are important to me. I need you to survive. One more thing I heard today. Sister Nikki said, it's been a year since some others went on the glory. And brothers and sisters, these are opportunities for all of us to pray, not just in this corporate setting. It's an opportunity for us to pray for individuals in our in our church sometimes we have to let the weak say I'm strong she said I'll be smiling sometimes the weak just have to say I'm strong sometimes the poor have to say I'm rich sometimes we have to say let the sick say I'm healed and brothers and sisters we got sick among us we have had death among us and I tell you this Prayer is a weapon. Matter of fact, it's our nuclear bomb. When we pray, he listens. And then we walk by faith and not by sight. So before we even get the healing, we have to walk in the healing. That's right. That's Matter of right. fact, faith is, 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 is actually seeing with your ears. That's what faith is. Before we even see it, we have to believe that God will do it. And there's another little song in the midst of prayer. It says there's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he can do for you. And as we look around this morning, oh, yes. she's yes. not the only person that's lost a mother. That's right, that's right. Pastor's not the first with sciatic. And you ain't the first person with sickness in your body. That's right. That's we have right. a list and litany of things that we've been through where God has healed us, taken care of us. Oh, it was a woman yes. with an issue of blood for 12 long years. Thank you. The healing was that she lived 12 years with a, with a sickness. And I don't know what we're going through today, but I got a sneaky suspicion that everything is going to be all right. Lord, we need you. We can't make it without you. My Lord, my Lord. And we believe that you, if you've done it before, that you can do it again. So before we call on anybody else, God, we call to the head of the house. We ask you right now, God, to ease the pain in the name of Jesus. Yes, and not yes. pass the sciatic nerve. Jesus. But God, not only that he's been going through that, but the loss of members, the sickness of members. Glory, but we got right now, we glory. pray that there won't be a weight that he can't carry along with you. My 
So we pray right now in the name of Jesus with Sister Crosby is taking care of mother and, and all of God. We pray for our leaders today that we know that you will not put more on any of us that we can bear. So right now in the name of Jesus, heal, deliver, and set free like only you can. God, we have been attacked on every level. But God, this won't be the first battle that we've been through. Glory, glory. You have brought us through before. So we is asking you right now in the name of Jesus to bring us through this again. Thank you, Lord. And we will not wait till the battle is over. Yes, yes, yes. We'll shout right now. For we believe it is already done. We God, we pray for Sister Nikki. We pray for the McCoy family. We pray for every family that is not even mentioned today that is going through life's trials and tribulations. We understand, God, that you are the potter. Hallelujah. You have broken hearts. Thank you. But a broken heart ain't nothing hard for you to put back together together again. So God, since you made us and we're your creature, we ask you right now, God, to work on your creatures this morning, only like you can. Right now. Ease our pain in places that we're hurt. Lord Jesus. He'll deliver in other places that we need deliverance Lord, in. Have mercy, have mercy. And at the end of the day, we will be careful to give your name to praise. The honor is all due to you. And we seal it today yes, Lord. with yes, a praise. Yes. As we clap our hands, yeah, as we lift our voice. Thank you. We praise you right now. Praise you. Praise you. In the midst of it all. Through hard trials and tribulations, we have learned how to shout in the in the middle of the storm. Matter of fact, God, we rain dancers. When the storm comes, we still praise your name. When the fire comes, we still praise your name. When the death comes, we still praise your name. Through the good and the bad, we praise your name. And we praise your name right now. In Jesus' name. In the only name that matters is not in Buddha's name. It's not in Confucius' name. It's not in Muhammad's name. It's not in Alala's name. It's in Jesus' name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that you're king of kings and lord of lords. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No, friend. you to bless the gift, the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
days of back problems, she's having leg problems. Well, good morning. We bless God Almighty. God is good, isn't he? Amen. 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 We gonna do something new today. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Who whoever said uh, you have to always preach standing up? <laughs> Amen. 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 Matter of fact. The Bible teaches us that there were times when Jesus, he sat and taught his disciples. Amen. I believe I'm right. Yeah, I believe I'm right. Amen. Bless God. I, I do want to share with us uh, here for a few minutes. Uh, don't want to uh, hold you long, and, but I want to hold you long enough. Amen. And uh, thank God for everyone. Thank God for uh, uh, Doug, who has helped to lead us through uh, this time of worship and all. And uh, Sister Nikki, Minister, thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for all that you've done and doing. And uh, it does mean a lot when you know people care. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's, it's just something to believe and that uh, you have people who really care uh, for you and uh, they're praying for you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. We thank God for our Facebook uh, listeners and uh, always appreciate uh, you all for being on uh, with us on Sunday. And uh, I was doing uh, one of my weekdays uh, and it was my cousin from Hope, Arkansas, asked me what I thought about uh, the uh, services, the media, and all of that, and doing on Facebook. And, and, you know, I think the truth of the matter is wherever we can praise God and whatever means God give us to worship him, praise him, we ought to do that. Amen. You know, I don't believe for one minute uh, the devil uh, thought that uh, he really uh, could just shut us down, but he thought he'd take a stab at it. Uh, he, he, there's no way for him to shut God down because all power, yeah. and I say all, I mean all, all power is in his hand. Amen. Amen. And when we went through the COVID and all of that, and uh, we didn't... Uh, we were not able to come inside. We came inside, we had mass and all of these things and all of this, that's fine and well. Uh, but uh, it didn't stop us. We, we was on the parking lot. I remember Reverend Hunter down in uh, Hope, uh, they had a flatbed uh, truck out there, the flatbed of it. And uh, they had the music and all of that on top of the flatbed, and people were sitting in their cars, and people were just praising God, blessing God uh, for the opportunity to have uh, to come and worship God. Even here, we, we've we even had anniversary and different things like that out on the parking lot. So God always makes a way. Amen. He makes a way, and I am thankful uh, to God. And uh, I'm glad uh, we have uh, a seat. Amen. I, you know, I can preach right there on the side of that pulpit, sitting on that floor. You know, hey, you, you got to have a mouth to speak, you know. <laughs> so we speak and uh, allow God to. But I am thankful. I am thankful. And I appreciate you praying. And uh, don't stop. And uh uh, there are a number of us who are going through in certain areas, and uh, we need prayer. Amen. Amen. So let us pray one uh, for the other. Amen. I want to share with you today one of my favorite passages of Scripture. Uh, You've heard me take a stab at it before. Uh, it is a passage that I uh, appreciate very much. I just want to share from it. It's the 40th uh, number of Psalms, the 40th 
number of psalms, the 40th number of psalms. Amen. You pray with me, pray for me, and that's, as Dr. C. Dennis ever would say, why you praying for yourself or praying for others, don't forget uh, to whisper a prayer for yourself. Amen. We, we need to pray individually for ourselves. Amen. And certainly we do want to uh, keep the uh, McCoy family lifted. Amen. And uh, it's people, there are a number of us who know what it means uh, to leave, lose a mom and a dad. Yes. And those things, are, right. hey, we, we need the strength of God. Amen. And more especially when you've had a close uh, connection with family. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> From the 40th number of Psalms, I want to begin reading at the first verse. First verse. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit out of the miry clay yeah. and set my feet up on a rock yeah. and established my yeah. goings, my steps. Yeah. He has put a new song, a new song. in my mouth. Yeah. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. <clears throat> This is a psalm of David, and David wrote, I waited patiently, patiently upon the Lord. I waited patiently. That, uh, every once in a while, you have to read scripture, and you discover that uh, it's an individual thing. Maybe others have, maybe others haven't, but right now I'm talking about me. I waited. That's what David says. I waited patiently upon the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and he heard my cry. Amen. And uh, I'm waiting patiently on the Lord right now. Amen. I'm waiting. I'm waiting patiently. Not, not, not just for this sciatic nerve thing, but I'm waiting for him to do a work, even right here. Because after all is said and done, this is his house. This is his people. And when God gets ready, when he decides to move, hey, everything is going to be all right. Amen. He's a good God. He's a mighty good God. When you look at this 40th number of Psalms, it's uh, a messianic psalm. And... Uh, when we talk about Messianic, we know that it has reference to our Lord, our Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And even though David uh, lived back before, as we know, quote, Jesus was born, and then on the other side of the coin, we know that Jesus always was and always will be. Amen. I remember it was uh, Dr. Emmanuel Scott who pastored in uh, Dallas, I believe it was, yeah, Dallas. And uh, he said he was taking his grand boys out for a ride one day and uh, a couple of them were sitting in the back seat and they came up with a discussion and they said, where did God come from? And so the boys, they began to dialogue, and they said, well, I think God came here, God came from there, and they were just going on. And Dr. Scott says, well, I hope that conversation don't get up in this front seat. And said, sure enough, before I could get that out of my mind, that conversation got up in the front seat. And they said, Papa? Where did God come from? And they had already given their thoughts. They, where they figured God might have come from, but he said God gave him a right now revelation 
And he told them, he said, son, boys, God didn't do no coming. He was already here. He always was and always will be. I think that's sufficient for us to say God has always been and he always will. God is a mighty good God. But in the, in the Psalms here, it's a Messianic Psalm, and really uh, we see David being able to foresee things that would come or things that would be in the future. David was a man who was uh, a great warrior. And that's important for us to see in the text. He was a warrior. Uh, he was a warrior. He knew how to fight. Amen. Some of us, physically, we think we know how to fight. That's all right. But the truth of the matter is, much of what we call fighting is not really fighting. It's not good fighting anyway. You know, you got to learn to use more than these right here. Right. Amen. There are certain things when you get into battle, these fists not going to help you. That's it. Amen. Because uh, when you think about battle, uh, when you come into dealing with uh, spiritual battles. It's a whole different uh, story of dealing with, of getting into a fight out in the yard or out in the street. I remember back years ago, uh, my brother James, and he's gone on now, but my brother James, uh, it, it, if you wanted to see somebody fight, all you got to do is say less, and he would do it. <laughs> that boy, love, he loves some fight. He loves some fight, you know, he, he, and he would fight, and could fight. He could fight. And uh, I remember we was on, on the, uh, at the football field one time, and, and uh, this big old guy, he was, I mean, he was big. And uh, so he was trying to, uh, you know, you know, run over me and all that kind of stuff. And was I afraid of him? A little bit. <laughs> I really was. He big guy. And that old boy was known for beating up on people. But I looked out of the corner of my eye, and I saw James. And when I saw James, I just drew back and I lit into this guy. And by that time, somebody said, James, this guy beating up on Donald. Well, I don't know why they got, he was beating up on me. They probably figured I was going to get beat up. <laughs> but James was on the other side of a fence, and he just leaped over that fence. And before I do it, he was right there. I said, boy, it's on now. He ain't going to whoop both of us. Well, what does that got to do with anything? David was a warrior. And he knew how to fight. And one day he finally came up against this big giant. And we know he was a giant because the record tells us he was some nine feet tall. I don't, I don't know if we even got anybody around. I don't know. But he was nine feet tall. And he was crying out, send me a man. Send me a man. And David heard him. Send me a man. David wasn't no nine feet tall. But he heard him say, send me a man. That wasn't the thing that really got David's attention. 
But David already knew a little bit about him because he had heard words that came from Dave, uh, uh, Goliath's mouth where he was literally talking down David's God. And Goliath says, Brother Moxley, send me a man. Send me a man. Fight me. And David had a question. Who is this big uncircumcised giant that he defiles the house of God? No, you got to be careful what you ask for. Because every now and then you asking for this, you may decide that ain't what you want. But since you asked for it, it's one of those things where you said, let's get it on. David took on this big nine foot giant, took him down. And as I understand it, took his sword and took off his head. Wow. David was successful with Goliath, and he was successful in leading armies and, and fighting and doing different things. David, he was a warrior. But make no mistake about it. David realized and understood there was things that he could not do by himself. There were things that he had to wait on the Lord. That's what I believe it was David who said, wait. And again I said, wait on the Lord. David knew how to wait on it. And so he picks up a pen, he takes and he writes and he says, I, I don't know about anybody else. He said, but I waited patiently upon the Lord and he inclined unto me. I said this is messianic. It's a, it's a word here that's being used. David is talking about a man, and he's talking pro prophetically about someone who would go through suffering and go through pain and agony go through all of these things and the man wasn't even born. But then again, I remember Dr. Emmanuel Scott. Where did he come from? He didn't do no coming. He always was. And so, as we look at the text, God, through his son, Jesus Christ, had not permitted or allowed his son to be seen on the earth. But God is God who always has been, yes, will always be. David had a prophetic word and he knew the time was coming. Didn't know when. Isn't it amazing how we prophesy some things we don't even know necessarily what we're talking about or who we're talking about. We just know God has given us a prophetic word. And here David is Speaking about someone 
whom he was waiting on that he didn't even know. So he says, I waited patiently. And all of this stuff is a paradox. Look at David. He's waiting on somebody that he never got an opportunity to physically see with his eyes. But he knew of his existence. That's why the scripture teaches, I am he who was who is and is to come. How can you be a I am and a who is and is to come all at the same time? Wow. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. So, David, a great fighter, great warrior, went through different ordeals in life and he writes and gives us hope didn't know any of us by name we still hold on to those words of hope That's it. we sang songs like I'm just waiting on Jesus That's it. to return again won't it be grand when the saints go marching in? We don't know when, we don't know where it will be, but all we know, we know that we know. He's worth waiting on. It is Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord. He'll renew your strength. You'll mount up on wings as eagles. Run, not be tired, and walk and not Faint. Isaiah says, wait. And again I say, wait upon the Lord. Woo! I'm not making this stuff up. It's in the word. He said, I waited patiently upon the Lord. We, we got to learn to wait patiently. We sang a song. I think we sang it here at the church sometime. You can't hurry, God. You just got to wait. It doesn't matter how long it takes. You can't hurry, God. That's it. But He'll show up yes, he will. on time. Yes, he will. In His time. All right. All right. <laughs> Woo! Ain't He good? You know, he goes before us. Yeah. Some of you, some of you have heard me tell the story about my wife and I and Erica. We was coming from uh, Oklahoma, and it started snowing. And that car, we went across the bridge, and that car just turned all the way around. And we got straightened out. Erica started hollering because she seen some people evidently must have hit the same ice, but they went down. You know what? I'm just crazy enough to believe God knew I was on my way. And he orchestrated and intended for me to see everything that I was able to see. Just so. When times get rough yeah. and the going get tough and when I really feel like throwing in the towel, every once in a while he reminds me, you remember when? Yeah, my Lord, my Lord. I, I know people get tired of hearing talking about when that bullet went over my head and went in that glove. I, I know y'all think, I know people get tired of hearing that, but I'm telling you, it's a God thing. It's a God thing. When I preach, I teach, and I hear people telling their story, and there are people who feel like giving up, yeah. throwing in the towel, and all I have to say, I don't have a whole lot to say, 
But every once in a while, all I can say is, just wait on it. That's it. It's going to be all right. That's it. Yeah. You may have to cry some tears now. Yeah. And that's okay. <coughs> but do you know God loves you so much? He loves me so much? Who goes around catching bottles of tears? what the word says. He bottles up our tears. He cares so much about us that he catch our tears. He knows every drop. I mean, when you, have you ever had a real serious cry? And I'm talking about, I mean, crying and seem like the tears won't stop. He knows every tear. He knows every drop. And he knows every pain that goes with it. Yes, he does. And he's able yes, he is. to wipe every tear away from your eyes. What a mighty God. Yes, he what a mighty God. Thank you, Lord. I'm, you, you know what? I'm, I'm sitting up here this morning. You know, I could be standing up. But every once in a while, just go and take it easy. Don't, don't push it. Don't try to, you know, just know he's there. He's there. They, they, they used to say that in my first church. The addict said, he's there. He everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, boy. That's just to do how to sing that song. He, yeah. He everywhere. Yes, he is. And you got to believe and you got to trust him. You got to know that he is there and he will take care. David, way back in the days, and Jesus had not even been born into the world. And he gives a prophetic message in the Psalms. How do he know my pain? How do he know what I'm feeling? There is no secret. That's it. He knows. He knows. And so as I must hurry on, Jesus came into the world and the people were waiting on what David had told them to wait on. He had given his time, he had given his service, and he said, I waited patiently on the Lord and he inclined unto me. He heard my cry. Is there anybody here who really believe? I'm talking about a God that's so powerful. You ain't even start crying. And David said he heard my cry. Yeah, that's it. That's it right there. Mm. You hadn't even felt the hurt yet, but he heard my cry. Oh, glory. We used to sing that old hymn, I love the Lord, he heard my cry and pitied every groan. Long as I live, what trouble rise, I'll hasten to his throne. Hallelujah. David says, I waited. And what's the moral of that story? I waited. And I encourage you to wait also. Hang on in there. Though the going get tough and the roads are rough, hang on in there. He will. And he is. 
able to bring us out. David's dead and gone. Buried in his grave. Jesus comes on the scene. David prophesied about a God that he'd never met. Didn't know, but he believed he was coming. He said, I've been waiting patiently on him. Didn't even get to see him, but he waited. I'm telling you today, we serve a God who's worth waiting on. He's <laughs> worth waiting on, y'all. I'm telling you, you know, I, all of this that's going on in our world today, we, I mean, we got, we got a mess. But can you please believe me when I tell you? He knows. And he is in charge. <laughs> Woo. Here he is. He's walking the roads of Nazareth. Went about doing good, feeding those who were hungry, giving sight to the blind, allowing those who were not able to see, letting them see, and some saying, They not only went blind, but they were born blind. But when they met Jesus, they left seeing. Well, how many of us know when you are, you have made up your mind that you are going to do it God's way there's going to be some repercussion behind it. That's it. Jesus was God himself manifested in the flesh. And from the time he came into the world, I mean from the time, there was, there was a plot and a plan to put him to death. But they couldn't do anything with him until he was ready. What a mighty God. One day, one day, I close with this. There were those who were looking for an opportunity to get him. And for what? What had he done? Who had he hurt? Who was he mean to? He went about doing good, raising the dead, giving sight, he giving water to the thirsty, food to the hungry. What had he done? And they sought to put him to death. And he didn't run. He didn't hide. He stayed out in the opening where you could see him. Oh, what a mighty God. And God, the Almighty, who is, who was, who shall ever be, seen everything that was going on. And he tells his son, you got to go and redeem man. Bring him to his rightful place. But it's going to cost you. If y'all don't hear me no more, I want you to hear this, what I'm saying. A high price. Jesus. He knew the price. He knew the agony. He knew the pain. I guess it was one night he 
thought about all of these things and he wasn't afraid. Literally, he wanted to please his father. And he got to talking to the father every now and then. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I'm telling y'all, there are some things I do not know, I do not understand. And sometimes, you, you know, my mama would tell me this, my daddy would tell me this. I try to figure out, it's got to be an easier way than this. Well, I got to do it this way. We, 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 we have that today. And Jesus knew there was no other way. But he goes to his father. He said, if thou be willing, let this cup pass. But I love him. I love him because of the nevertheless. Every once in a while, you got to say, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. God so loved us, he sent his son. And some of us are waiting patiently upon him right now. Jesus went through the pain, the suffering, the hurt. And it would be so much easier. And there's a lot of people who try, try different things. Man. You know? Oh, why I got to suffer through this? Why I got to do this? Lord, just, just let me go, Lord. Just let me go. But David is saying through this prophetic word, he says, you got to wait. Not yet. It's painful, yes. As the stri strips going across his back, it's painful. They've taken bones and metal and whip it across his back. It's painful. But David said, I waited patiently upon the Lord. He took him the long way around, carrying him to a hill called Calvary. Yeah. Knee bones gave away, he falls to the ground. How much more? That's it. I waited patiently <laughs> upon the Lord. We got to learn to wait. Gets there, falls under the cross. Have to take the sword of one of the soldiers and place it on another man, a black man at that. For him to help carry that cross. Carries him to a hill called Calvary and drive nails. Some theologians think it was spikes, not just a nail. A nail is even just as vicious as you can think of, but think about a spike going through his hand or his wrist. But let me, hear, let me tell you what he said. On that cross, when he got ready to die. He said, he lied, lied. Now by Sabeth and I here. My God, my God. Why there? How forsaken me. That waited. And today, we must wait upon the Lord. Wait, and again I say, wait 
upon the Lord. And he will mount you up in due time. David says, I waited patiently upon the Lord. And he inclined unto me. He heard my cry. Make no mistake about it. If you haven't, you will. All of us will cry sometime. While every head is bowed in this place. And I would that you just close your eyes for a moment and just begin to reminisce in your mind. That may be something you've been praying for for a while. Maybe something you've been hoping for. And just maybe you really feel like God has forgotten you. Maybe the devil has tried to convince you that God really doesn't care. Or possibly try to convince you that he doesn't have the power to do it. But I want to challenge you today. Wait. And again, I say wait upon the Lord. He will take care of He brought you safely thus far. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. This is a good thing. Trust in the Lord. The doors of the church is open. I let a Christian experience as a candidate for baptism. May we stand over the place. Is there anybody here that really loves the Lord? I really love you. The doors of the church is open. Now let a Christian experience kind of make the baptism. You are here in the spirit of the Lord speaks to your heart. We invite you to come. Trust him, trust him, trust him. It's a walk of faith. The door is open, the door is open. Can we trust him today and know that he is God? He's able, he's able. I waited, I waited. There are some things somebody in here waiting for right now. I ask you not to get discouraged. Just keep on waiting. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
God, as I believe you have given to me, I have given to this your people. I pray that you would just touch our hearts, touch our minds. Help us, oh God, that we will trust in you. Look, oh God, to you from which cometh all of our help. Help us to know that our help cometh from you who's made the heavens and earth. We pray, God, your forgiveness of all of our shortcomings, that you would wash us thoroughly, that we might be made white as snow, create into us a clean heart, renew within us the right spirit. I pray, God, by the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, every person in this place, every person on the Facebook, that you will do something right now before this day is over before this next week is out God that they will be able to know that it is you that we can really depend upon and we believe in you God for those who are sick those who are having breathing problems those who are the nursing home those oh God who are going through those who are hearts are feeling heavy we certainly lift up the McCoy family we lift up all of the families God there are so many people so many people are going through right about now we pray God by the power of your anointing we ask you to reveal yourself God show yourself strong have your way have your way you are the potter, we are the clay. Mold and shape us right now. We thank you. We thank you. We receive your blessings right now. We receive it by the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. To you that is able to keep us from falling, to present us spotless before the Father in heaven. Your love, your majesty, sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. We'll all say together, Amen, Amen. God bless.